Hey guys, what's up? Uh, in this video, I'm going to be showing you some uh, improvements that I've been doing in the Easy EV, Easy EV Ray Trace. Okay, I just I just uh, put this out last week for who wants to improve the quality in EV render, right? But then I was going deep more into the process and I figured out there were a few limitations that there are kind of some limitations uh, because the process that I was doing right now was uh, taking uh, EV for reflections texture, right? And uh, overall materials and using cycles for uh, white lighting, okay? And this uh, works uh, in DJI will be there for the lighting that are casting in the scene. For example, if you put a red light or if you put a blue light or whatever, that light will be like a uh, bouncing uh, and casting more bluish or reddish, right? But what about the materials? If the materials are taken in a white condition, like you really don't see any DJI coming from the materials, right? And uh, still, the the process uh, that you have up to now improve the quality for EV because EV it's not uh, fully full realistic. It can be like you can make it look likes, but uh, I think with this improvement that I did, we will kind of having a big big deal in terms of uh, improving quality using EV. Easy EV ray trace. I will show you how to do that. Okay, this is just the main scene, right? And this is just a regular HDRI, right? Around that, you can see this is EV, so it's not heavy. We don't have any shadows and anything because that's how Easy EV works, right? We are not gonna play with EV that much for for the lighting itself. We will not see that here, right? What we, what I've been changing, and that's for the update, is this. So if you select your plane, and you see the IDs, the ID material. If you watch the previous tutorials, you know how this works, okay? So, but now instead of we have just the alpha maps uh, for the IDs that you want to. To put alpha maps right we have a more complex node right what is not that this node does uh, if you take a deep look uh, you can choose any object in your scene put ID 4 and then play around with those settings right by default it's taken just as an alpha so you can choose any texture here to place that as an alpha right but I've added those options, right? Which options? The color for the object, the GI intensity, and if it's an emissiveness or not, and the color of the emissiveness and the strength, right? Why I did that? Because before you just have an option to have one emission ID, which would be two, right? And then you control the strength and the emission, everything. But imagine if you have different lights in your scene with different. Um, different emissive materials with different colors in each emissiveness, right? You wouldn't be able to do that because the only emission here would be one color. Let's say you have one bluish here material and one yellowish here, you wouldn't be able to do that. But right now you have, man, you have, look at that, 10, 15 different IDs. So you can have 15 different emission colors and it's probably it's 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 never gonna be like that, right? Uh, but you can do. Now you can do. You can just choose the object ID, emission color, the strength here, and it will be an emission. Okay. All right. I'm gonna show you how this works and how this affects the final render. I'm gonna be rendering right now, just as it is, without any any changing anything. Okay. Yeah, let's just do a quick render here and see how it goes. Okay. Here we go. 
that's what we what do you have in your easy EV ray trace right now okay it's just taking the the HDRI of the world lighting in the scene making everything works okay however you see this is a bluish uh, bluish wall and this is a kind of reddish wall and we really don't see any ray trace coming from the material okay the ray trace is coming from the light here and there but not from the material now this has been changed and I'm gonna put a slot 2 to show you how this has been changed what you have to do is just you have to select any object in your scene right that you want to change the ID and basically you don't need to change the ID for everything because to be honest uh, for the thing look like it's realistic you don't need to have in DJI really properly casted for every single object in your scene and that takes a lot of calculation from cycles so that's why cycles takes time and everything all of it right you don't want that bullshit you just want maybe a floor or a ceiling or something in your scene that you really need that thing to cast the GI okay what you do you just select your object in this case this is one single piece I will just separate press P and separate this guy I will separate maybe this guy oh this guy is separate already this guy is separate maybe the floor oh the floor is a different object so we have three different objects here okay so we take this one we go to the object and pass index let's see let's add this index 4 okay for this guy we will add index 4 and then we will choose the color of the GI okay let's choose this color here which is more or less the color you have in here in your wall okay let's take this guy put this guy ID 5 choose the color here maybe something like this okay and the floor I will leave the floor like that because it's a kind of grayish it doesn't really matter and let's see how it, how it's gonna render right now and see the difference the difference maybe it's minimal but that makes that makes a that makes a big difference okay that's a good thing let me show you why this is happening because now another thing that I I added into the node is the option to having the alpha on and off we, we what is what does that means it means that if you are out is your alpha will come by the full on so you will just need to place a texture here if you want that to be an alpha or something or something okay but if you want to take an account the diffuse and if you want to make this node not being an alpha you just turn it the alpha off okay the same thing you do here right if you are using that for the GI casting just do that alpha off okay and now let's render again and see how it goes okay now you guys can tell that there is some bluish going on here some bluish going on here okay if we compare both look at that look at that some GI going on no GI some GI going on no GI you can see that okay but for you maybe that's not enough you want to see more the GI more prominent more GI really casting something so you always can go here in your GI intensity and then change it I would recommend it to, to see really the big difference to change it to something like high you know and then render that again let's choose uh, oh my goodness I forgot the ID slots let's choose some different ID slots so we can see the difference let's choose ID slot 3 Okay, ID is lot 3, let's render. So now you see you have more GI going on. Let's compare slot 3 
slot 2, slot 1. So that's how you have it up to now. And now you have it, the GI like going more prominent in your scene. There's something going on. So let's activate the GI for this guy and see if we get some difference. Okay. Let's put this guy GI maybe 20 or 10. I don't know. And let's choose uh, slot 4. And see how it goes. You see, all those kind of minimal, minimal things, it will make your life and your scene more realistic. Okay. Okay. Let's see. I don't see that much difference, maybe here. But yeah, you can see there is more brownish GI happening here. You see, here in the ground. And comparing with the previous, the first version is the first version is totally out of GI coming from the wall. Okay, and now you have some. You have some GI coming from the wall. So if you see, if you take and compare these two scenes, this one and the slot one scene, you see the difference. It's it's a big difference. Okay. That's the update. And if you guys are interested in that, the easy EV uh, ray trace is available on Gumroad and Blender, Blender Market. Right? See you soon. Stay up to date for the next updates.